Didoid piercings. What you should know before getting one done or a set. Coming up next on Consultations by a Piercer, episode number 56. For those who are new here, welcome to the Body Piercing and Tattooing channel. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Hope you're finding them helpful and useful. Um, and my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and I operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio as I have for going on 30 or over 30 years now. And located inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo here in the lovely city of Des Moines. Before we get too far into this, I, I would like to do a disclosure. I'm going to be talking about a piercing that is done in the penis area of the anatomy. If you live in a part of the world or you're not the correct age or you simply uh, are easily offended by talking about such things or what have you, um, this is not the video for you. There are plenty of videos that have nothing to do with genital piercings or piercings of a sexual nature in any way, shape, or form on our channel. Um, there's literally over a thousand of them. Uh, I would suggest you watch one of those. If you're here looking for something that's going to be tantalizing, you're going to be disappointed. The sole purpose of this video is education. That's all I'm going to be talking about for the most part, or pretty much all. Uh, for those that are considering the piercing, um, their partners, or somebody that wants to learn and expand their knowledge about body piercing. Now let's talk about what this piercing is. It is a piercing that is done through the glands of the penis, usually towards the top. If you look at uh, the glands, they have almost a vertical-like edge, and then they kind of curve downward, kind of like a ramp, if you want to look at it that way. The more that ramp is pronounced, the better you are as far as a candidate for these particular piercings. Um, it's done through that, um, through the almost like a surface-to-surface -surface piercing with a curved barbell. Now let's talk about healing time and et cetera. Average healing time in these, usually about six to eight weeks, but I suggest treating them like a healing piercing for a minimum of three months. That will involve cleaning twice daily, uh, using a sterile saline solution. Personally, I like Neomed's Piercing Aftercare. Uh, it's my brand of choice and what we stock here in the studio and sell to our clients. Um, you can find comparable stuff. Uh, at most good department stores, drug stores, pharmacies, etc. The main thing you want to look for is that it does. It isn't a metal can, an aerosol style can. Uh, when you turn it over and look at the ingredients, there should be only two: water and sodium chloride, aka salt. There should be nothing else in there. No preservatives, no additives. If it does, that's not the product for you. Now, uh, the next thing we want to talk about is how the, the saline is delivered. If it's the style that uh, the body piercing aftercare version, uh, it comes out in a fine mist. Uh, the nozzle just sprays out very fine mist. So you just spray it directly onto the piercing, let it stay in contact for about five minutes, rinse if you'd like, or pat dry. If it comes out like a squirt gun where you can hit somebody at 50 paces with that stuff, it's like a super sucker. Uh, that's not going to feel very good and be kind of wasteful to spray that stuff on there, though it probably be very effective at what we want it to do. Um, generally with that, it might not be comfortable, though. Uh, what I suggest doing is compresses, take a clean, sterile piece of gauze sponge, or you can get away with using a clean paper towel. Just make sure that that roll is not used for anything else. Uh, fold it up, spray the till it's damp, laid against the area for roughly about five minutes, doing a cold compress. Um, and then pat dry or rinse. You want to do this part twice daily during the whole healing process. The other thing I suggest doing is the end of your shower, uh, basically uh, put the, uh, well, pull the area out or, you know, aim it so that the water flows over the area for about 30 seconds so you're rinsing off the area. I want to do this for a couple different reasons. Uh, depending on what type of uh, hygiene product or soap you're using, we want to make sure that doesn't get in the piercing. The other reason is uh, it helps to removing the discharge, which is the point of this whole thing. With the saline and in the shower, what we're trying to do is remove the discharge, that crusty stuff that hardens and collects on the jewelry. The reason we want it off is when it shifts and moves, it can agitate the piercing, which can lead to problems. The other thing, it, uh, we want to make sure that it's comfortable because that sliding back and forth and against that discharge can be very uncomfortable, especially when it's pulling away. It'll feel like you're pulling off a scab every time it does that. Um, and we need to make additional room for additional discharge. If you seem to have an obsessive amount of it or it's just not coming off, I really suggest going to see your piercer, have them take a look at it and clean it for you. Um, they can probably give you some hints on maybe doing a better job or, uh, you know, 
what have you, or address any issues that may be going on. Don't run to the medicine cabinet and start pulling out everything tipped in cotton or with a sharp point or has been suggested on the Internet and start digging around in there. You are probably going to cause issues that are not going to be fun to get rid of. Now let's talk about cross-contamination prevention, possibly the most important part of healing and piercing. Uh, wash your hands before you handle it. Only handle it by the ends. Really, the only time you need to have any contact with this piercing during the healing process is when you're checking the tightness of the ends. Usually with these, I do suggest having more secure jewelry, which is threaded jewelry. They can sometimes come unscrewed just from rubbing clothing, bedding, sexual activity. It's a good idea to check them on a regular basis. Uh, I usually suggest weekly. Pick a day of the week, Tuesday, and Tuesday's ball checking day. No oral contact or exchange of bodily fluids on here around the piercing for a minimum of six months. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't have sex for six months. That just means you need to use some type of latex barrier or um, if you're allergic to latex, uh, nitrate or some other alternative. Um, we're not worried about STIs, which is usually when we talk about condoms. What we're worried about is an exchange of bacteria from your partner and then you have an infection. Now, uh, I'll go a little bit further into lubricants and et cetera a little bit later on in sexual activity. Keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with this piercing needs to be cleaned on a regular basis. Next thing is do not swim. Uh, there is no body of water on planet Earth that is uh, completely devoid of microorganisms, especially large bodies of water that you can totally submerge your whole body in and move around in. Um it is an open wound until it heals. There is a possibility of one of those microorganisms working their way in there, a.k.a. a pathogen, and causing an infection. Keep pets away from the area. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. I would generally suggest that you limit their access 100% from any type of bedding or clothing. Uh, they tend to carry a lot of fungi and other things and bacteria and etc. on their fur. It's easy for that to transfer, and then you have an infection when it comes in contact with the piercing. Now, common question, how long does this take to heal? I usually suggest, uh, on average, about six to eight weeks. If you're sexually active, which most people are, I would suggest waiting, uh, considering it a healing piercing for a minimum of three months. When it heals, it will stop producing discharge. The piercing holes will grow kind of inward, um, kind of concave, and the jewelry will move freely. Whenever in doubt of whether or not a piercing is healed, Go see your piercer, have them take a look at it, and let them make an educated decision on whether or not they think it's healed or not. Trauma, clothing, and abuse. Avoid constrictive or abrasive clothing. Anything that rubs against the jewelry or the jewelry might get caught on. Um, kind of loose-fitting but still comfortable uh, clothing is best, especially during that initial tender phase of the first week or so. Do not sleep on the piercing. Make sure you're sleeping on your side or your back. That contact with the bedding when you're asleep, you move around a lot more than you think you do, can cause issues. Do not spin, rotate, or move the jewelry. I don't care what that person at the mall told you when you got your ears pierced back in 1981. Do not spin the jewelry. Generally, avoid contact with the piercing as much as possible. Um, it, the more abuse the more likely you are to see problems. And with this piercing, rejection is an issue. And the more contact that piercing has, the more likely that is going to happen. Bleeding. This piercing has been known to bleed off and on for about three to five days, during which time I generally suggest wearing a sanitary napkin or pad. This is going to do a couple different things. It's going to avoid the possibility of standing clothing. It's also going to add a little bit of cushioning during that tender phase and cuts down on the amount of moisture in the area. Another uh, hint is get puppy pads. Uh, if you sleep with the puppy pad underneath you, it's going to cut down the likelihood of staining sheets and staining bedding. Now let's talk about risks. This piercing has a risk or a known reputation of rejection. I have to say that I've had very good luck with this. I would uh, roughly estimate out of uh, 10, out of the hundreds that I've done, say one out of 10 will reject, maybe less. Uh, it really comes down to you having the correct anatomy to support the piercing and also uh, limiting contact as much as possible. I, the problem is, is that usually these are done in sets, one on each side, and usually one is fine, and then the other one will start migrating or rejecting. So that is a risk with this piercing, and you should know that going in. 
SDIs or STDs? I think they're the same thing, but we just changed what they're called now. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you are at a higher risk of contracting them even after the piercing heals. Uh, you have metal through soft tissue. There's a possibility during sexual activity that you could cause a tear, and then you have an exchange of bacteria. So, in other words, whenever switching partners, pra practice safe sex the way, you, the way you're supposed to, which means latex barriers, get tested, all that fun stuff that helps us to continue to be alive. Closure. This piercing is notorious with the idea that if you take the jewelry out, it closes very quickly. It's a longer piercing. It's very dense tissue. It's not uncommon to leave these out for a few hours and have problems getting them back in. It's a good idea only to take the jewelry out to replace it. And for uh, those people out there that are uncut, there really needs to be enough room. Uh, you have to have a looser foreskin for the jewelry. Otherwise, that pressure is not going to feel very comfortable. There's also the problem of it kind of agitating, the jewelry agitating the inside of the foreskin, which is very sensitive tissue, um, and uh, it could possibly lead to the piercing kind of migrating out of alignment or rejecting. Now let's talk about everybody's favorite subject, sex. Um, gentle at first. Uh, if it hurts to do something, take a break. Try something else. Whatever's going to work. Um, listen to your body, basically. Uh, over time, that'll go away, and it'll feel weirder to have it off out than to have it in, to be honest with you, the jewelry. Latex or some type of barrier for a minimum of six months. Uh, with condoms, if you can find them, the larger reservoir have kind of a bigger area on the front of them that uh, isn't quite as tight. It's going to be a little bit more comfortable. Avoid things that are super tight or ribbed because that pressure can kind of mess with the jewelry's placement, and not feel very good. Water-based lubricants are your best option. Avoid anything that has any type of uh, warming gels in it or uh, flavors or spermicide. All those can lead to your piercing having a reaction to those said chemicals. Uh, just basic water-based lubricants are your best option. Now, if you're using toys of any type, make sure they're thoroughly clean, not shared with other people, and it's not a bad idea just to use a condom while you're using them. Now let's talk about anatomy, placement, and angle. Um, like I mentioned earlier, what we're looking for ideally is this kind of like ramp-like structure where it's almost vertical at the crown of the, the, the glands, and then the inside of the glands kind of dips inward so that when the piercing's done, it's straight through that kind of edge of the ramp, that triangle. Um, the more pronounced that crown is, the better uh, success rate. Um, it needs to be deep enough into it that it's not going to reject or migrate really easily. Angle is usually done kind of uh, perpendicular to 90 degree angle of the crown. Uh, if they're done in sets, they're usually done off to the side on the top area um there's also the the dead center on the top it's a pretty common one two for one once again i just want to mention this because we're talking about anatomy the foreskin needs to be loose enough that th this isn't going to be impacted in most cases if you're uncut it may not be the best piercing for you um i would suggest something else mainly because it's a kind of gets kind of tight in that area when um, it's retracted, the foreskin's retracted, and it may not feel very good, and it may cause problems. A little bit about jewelry. This should always be done with a curved barbell. The curved barbell should be made of a biocompatible material, such as implant-grade titanium. It should also be internally threaded, no externally threaded jewelry, um, for a number of different reasons. Uh, the main one being is, if it's externally threaded in 2024, it's probably not the best quality jewelry in the first place. Now let's talk about pain and experience. Um, I've had mixed results on this one. I, everything from on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most painful, it's a 2 to about a 6. Uh, usually if you're doing them in sets, the first one hurts a little bit, and then the second one hurts more. The biggest difference with genital piercings and other parts of the anatomy, and often why we'll say male nipples are more uncomfortable uh, and painful than genital piercings, is you don't have the throbbing and aching immediately after the piercing is done. It's kind of like an ow, that hurts, and then it's over. These are done freehand. Uh, basically, the needles press up against the area and push through. 
Uh, the jewelry is attached to a guide pin, and then the guide pin pushes the needle out. Jewelry in, you take off the guide pin, you put the ball on. Probably uh, the thing that may take the longest is putting the ball on. Uh, they can be a little tricky sometimes. Those little tiny things, especially my big fingers. And just a little hint on changing jewelry, especially if you do it yourself, invest in a guide pin, a threaded one. Uh, it just makes the whole process a lot easier. Uh, you just basically take an end off, put the threaded uh, guide pin on there, push out the jewelry, take the old jewelry off, thread on the new jewelry, push it through. Um, another thing is, is you may need to downsize once this piercing is healed, depending on your anatomy and the jewelry they choose to pierce you with. Piercers tend to be more conservative and pierce with larger pieces of jewelry just to be on the safe side so that it doesn't exceed if, uh, the length of the jewelry if it swells. So oftentimes it will involve uh, downsizing. When sizing, you should always get yourself uh, erect and then measure. Don't do it when you're flaccid because sometimes that area tends to grow a little bit. Afterwards, there might be a little bit of slight bleeding, usually kind of right on the surface around the piercing holes. Lasts a few minutes, not anything you need to worry about. Um, generally, what I'll do is put a piece of gauze over the area and then uh, take a glove and put that over it and use rubber bands to hold it in place until you can get somewhere to get a pad or uh, where you're not going to worry about it bleeding if it stains clothing or what have you. Uh, you might have a little bit of slight uh, ache and pain, tenderness of the touch off and on. Um, the tenderness of touch lasts with this one about week to two weeks. Uh, if you bump it, you're going to know what kind of situation. For the most part, most people's most common reaction after getting it done is, I don't feel it. Now, let's talk about what to consider before getting the piercing done. Sometimes these piercings will bleed a little bit more than others. Everybody's a little bit different, so you should prepare in advance for that. Wear clothing that you're not worried about getting stained, that's easy to remove and put back on, uh, especially shoes. If you end up having to take your shoes off, wear, wear your van slip-ons or clogs or sandals or you know something that's easy to get off. Don't wear the 22-hole docks. <laughs> you're going to be here a while kind of situation. Um, also, uh, it's not a bad idea to buy pads in advance. You can't sleep on this piercing. If you're a stomach sleeper or you sleep with a, your penis in contact with something, I would kind of try to train yourself a few months beforehand to sleep on your side or your back where there's no contact with the area. Um, it's easier. It's, it just takes one more stress level out of the situation. Plus getting a good night's sleep, being well rested, healthy, stress-free, means faster healing next one talk to your partner if you are in a committed relationship and considering getting this piercing done it's a good idea to sit down with your partner and just discuss what it's going to take to heal it how this may affect uh your sex life etc before you get it done um i don't advise getting this done as a surprise um especially leading up to a romantic weekend because you're not going to want to have fun times so unless your fun weekend, romantic weekend is going to, you know, involve just a lot of heavy petting and hand holding, it's probably not the best thing to do this the night before. Uh, if you do have something like that coming up and you're thinking about getting the piercing and maybe maybe the person's out of the country or out of town for like three or four months, um, plan ahead. Make sure that it's going to be close to healing or healed by the time they get back. The other thing is, is uh, it's a good idea if you're involved with somebody to have some romantic times before you come in. One of the things piercings of various parts of the body do is it draws attention to the area. And when you associate the area to sexual activity, it can make you a little bit more driven in that direction. So it's a good idea to kind of get a little bit of that out of your system beforehand um, when you can enjoy it and not have to worry about it hurting and dealing with everything else that goes with those first couple times you have sex with a new piercing. It's a good idea to do this when you have a few days off from work um, or other activities where you really don't have to do anything. You kind of sit on the couch in uh, comfy pants and uh, not have to go out and, and, and do anything that involves a lot of movement or jostling around. Uh, let it get through that tender phase to do all that stuff. If you exercise or you're active in any type of uh, sport or activity or hobby, hobby that may involve a lot of bouncing around and movement, like let's say motocross, 
it might be best to do this when you're not doing those things. You can't swim. If you're a swimmer and you swim all summer, you want to wait until the fall and get this done so that it's fully healed before that season starts again. Otherwise, it might be something that you consider doing once you've kind of retired that activity. Um, you can't get in the water for a minimum of three months. Take, into, take that into account when deciding whether or not getting pierced, um, regardless of where the piercing's at on your body. The last one, which is always the last one, are you going on vacation or a trip? Vacations have a couple different problems. The first one being is often you're envir in environments you've never been in before. So you, have, uh, you may come in contact with pathogens that you do not have an immunity built up for, so it increases your likelihood of infection. Also, a lot of people, even though we go on vacation to relax, it can be very stressful, which can affect healing. The other thing is, this is something I already talked about, swimming. Uh, you can't swim, and most people, when they go on vacation, they want to swim. Do you have this piercing? What was your experience like? Um, do you have any hints for anybody else out there considering it or going through the process of healing it? Leave a comment. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I would love to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you in that next video.